Okay, let's do a few examples where we use our last theorem to find relative extrema of functions. Here is one example number one, find relative extrema of this particular function x square y plus y square minus 2x minus 6y plus 14. So the first things we do is we will find the partial derivatives. So what is f sub x? f sub x of this function is 2x minus 2 and f sub y is 2y minus 6. Okay? And now remember, uh, what are, we, we will first extract all the critical points. It's just like a fisherman. You can take out all the critical points and then check the critical points if they're relative extreme or not because uh, they might be several points. Uh, and what is the definition of critical points? Either both derivatives should be zero, the partials, or the uh, at least one of the partials does not exist. The partials here are polynomials because this is a polynomial. Is the polynomials so they exist at every point. So you know, so if you uh, if you want to do fx equals zero and fy equals zero, you can find out like if this is equal to zero, x is equal to one, y equal to three. Here you get only the point x y equal to one three. That's the only point that comes out from here. If uh, fx or Fy does not exist. There's no such point. Okay. No point satisfying this criteria. But this there one three. So in totality we only have a point one three. Now how do we figure out if one three for this function is going to be local min, local max, um, local I mean, or neither, right? One hint is that. You see the positive x square, y square. So by making x and y really huge, like billion and billion and billion each, you can get really big valued function. And these these would not really matter much. So it tells you that there is really no absolute maximum, right? Uh, but the question is, there is still could be a relative maximum. What you can do is with these kind of things, you can complete the squares. Okay, so. If you complete the squares, you have x squared minus 2x plus 1, that will go with that. So that will give you x minus 1 squared plus y squared minus 6y. So that's minus 2 times 3y. So you need plus 9. So this is y minus 3 squared. Plus 9 right here and plus 1, that's 10. We still have, have 4 left. Okay? So if you have this, this is your now f. Okay, now it's easy to see that what is this graph is actually, um, you can see that basically f can never be negative or even cannot even go below 4. Because no matter what you put here, what you put here, you can get square of that. The, the lowest damage, you can make it 0 here, 0 here, which happens exactly at the point 1, 3. So at 1, 3, f has a local minimum actually. And it's actually also an uh, absolute minimum. Essentially, this is a uh, what is this? This is this is like f equals x squared plus y squared, but it has been shifted, and plus four it has been shifted up. So what this is is like a paraboloid, but over the point one three and at a height of four. Okay. So obviously at one three, so we will say f has minimum value. Of 4 and 1, 3. Okay? That completes this example. Uh, let's move on to this example. Find relative extrema again, at this time of a different function. Again, we will find partial derivatives. We start always by finding partial derivatives. f of x equals negative 1 third minus, so 1 third will come down. And two thirds of the powers, negative two thirds, so it will be x squared plus y squared, negative, uh, sorry, two thirds, negative two thirds goes down, negative inside is 2x, and there's a 
three month term bank. You can check that this is a derivative. And similarly, Fy is negative two y over three x squared plus y squared two thirds. Okay. Um, okay. What happens now? If you try to solve for f of x equals zero. f of x0 seems to imply uh, it, this has to be non-zero and this has to be zero, right? Uh, but if this is non-zero, if this is zero, then this x is zero. But if this is non-zero, y is non-zero. But if y is non-zero, then this is non-zero. So to get both of these to be zero, right? The only way it can happen is actually x and y are both zero, but then they are not really zero at that point, right? So if you want to say f of x0 and f of y is equal to 0, there are no points. If you say that f of x or f of y does not exist, you get a point 0, 0. Okay? At 0, 0, these partials don't exist. And what happens here is that because the partial zone that exists, there's a sharp point. The graph of this function is like this. Um, you can see that as x and y get bigger, this whole thing gets subtracted from 1. So at 0, there's a height of 1. So it's like this. Kind of like the minaret of, uh, not the minaret, the dome of some mosques, which has a very pointy uh, top, like not a smooth dome, but a pointy dome, right? And that's the graph of function. So over there, it's a local, you can see it's a maximum. How do you know it's a maximum? Because if you start increasing x and y values, you will detect from one, right? So f has max value of one and at zero, zero. Okay? So those are two examples. Okay, well, I will do one more example uh, where it will be a saddle point. So we'll do that in the next installment of this thing.